They say truth is the first casualty of war. In the case of Ukraine, you could say empathy too has become a victim. An entire country is being bombed into submission. The targets don't know if they will survive another day. There's needless death and destruction. And all the world has to offer is condemnation. 400,000 people have fled Ukraine. Scores have died. Families have been torn apart. Children have been rendered homeless. Look at these images. A young boy has been separated from his father who decided to stay in Kiev and fight Russian forces. He's eight years old. He was rescued from the side of a road near the Polish border. With tears rolling down his eyes and his voice breaking with emotion, he described the grief that has gripped his family. Papa будет продавать что-то, будет помогать нашим героям, нашим войскам, нашим войскам будет помогать, может даже будет воевать. Мы шли где-то три часа, и вот вы нас спасли. Я думала, что мы уже будем идти эти два, три дня. Look at these images now. They're from Lviv. This mother has been was seen bidding a tearful farewell to her son. She's escaping to the border. The son has decided to stay back and defend the country. We hope that they are going to train to Poland. The free train. With no tickets. At the border, the scenes are equally distressing. This woman fled Kiev when the bombings began. She walked for four days to reach the Slovak border, then waited for another three days for her relatives to arrive. When she saw them, she could not hold back her tears. We are waiting for them for three days, and they were four days on the road to the border. But they finally came to the border. They were angry about what was happening with this strange Putin. Don't hurt me. It's just what was happening against the children. Back in Kiev, the people who decided to stay back have taken it upon themselves to fight the Russians. Like this woman, she was seen launching a Molotov cocktail on a Russian tank. In the Cherniv region in northern Ukraine, people are blocking roads without any arms, stopping Russian tanks from entering their cities, all the while singing the Ukrainian national anthem. In the border city of Melitopol, people are risking their lives in a similar fashion, armed with nothing more than slogans. They were seen forming a human shield, trying to stop Russian tanks with their bare hands. As the battle rages on on the streets, subways have become bomb shelters. At one such metro station in Kiev, a man was seen playing Ukraine's anthem on a trumpet. Similar scenes from another bomb shelter in Kiev. People singing for life, waving flashlights and trying to uplift their spirits. This next video was shared by Ukraine's defense ministry. The man you see is a singer. He is now volunteer to fight, dressed in military gear and armed with a gun. He sang on the streets of Kiev to rally his countrymen against the Russians. Бою лузі червона калина похилилася. And then we have stories like these. This man is a Russian citizen. He was seen burning his passport at a protest in Kiev. He said he was ashamed of what his country was doing. Гори та хуйня в одну. 
Простите, братья, стыдно. In Georgia, another Russian activist was seen burning his passport and telling Ukrainians that he stands with them. Putin! 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 And these are not isolated incidents. This seems to have become a movement of sorts. Social media is flooded with videos of Russian citizens, activists, refugees burning their passports in solidarity with Ukraine, denouncing the actions of President Vladimir Putin. No. Nope. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. I can be born in Russia, I can be born in Ukraine. These stories are moving, they're also symbolic. They tell you how this is Putin's war, not Russia's. He wanted it, perhaps not his people. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.